Hey friends, this is Noah Crow, and as we are continuously extending our safer at home sequestration during coronavirus, and as we hear of stories such as farmers in the Midwest plowing their crops into the land because there's nobody to pick them and they can't make any money off of them, while other people are afraid they don't have enough money to go to the grocery store and buy the food they need because they're not allowed to go to work and they've lost their jobs. The insanity of the world uh, is showing us some certain things, as if the virus is actually a mirror for, or a magnifying glass for some really incoherent aspects of our current culture. It's kind of insane that we could have farmers tilling their crops back into the soil while we have American families concerned about getting fresh food on their plates. So I'm going to begin reading a story written in, or published in, I believe, 1975 by Ernest Kallenbach called Ecotopia. Ecotopia by Ernest Kallenbach. Eco, from the Greek oikos, household or home. Topia, from the Greek topos, place. In nature, no organic substance is synthesized unless there is provision for its degradation. Recycling is enforced. Weston's next assignment, colon, Ecotopia. The Times Post is at last able to announce that William Weston, our top international affairs reporter, will spend six weeks in Ecotopia beginning next week. This unprecedented journalistic development has been made possible through arrangements at the highest diplomatic level. It will mark the first officially arranged visit by an American to Ecotopia since the secession cut off normal travel and communications. The Times Post is sending Weston on this unique and difficult investigative assignment in the conviction that a candid, on-the-spot assessment of Ecotopia is essential, 20 years after its secession. Old antagonisms have too long deterred close examination of what has been happening in Ecotopia, a part of the world once near, dear, and familiar to us, but closed off and increasingly mysterious during its decades of independence. The problem now is not so much to oppose Ecotopia as to understand it, which can only benefit the cause of international good relations. The Times Post stands ready, as always, to serve that cause. May 3rd. Here we go again, dear diary. A fresh notebook with all those blank pages waiting to be filled. Good to be on the way at last. Allahaney's already receding behind us like pale grain ripples on an algae-covered pond. Thinking back to the actual beginnings of this trip, Almost a year ago, those careful hints dropped at the White House like crumbs for the president's vacuum cleaner mind to suck up, until finally they coalesced into some kind of ball and came out as his own daring idea. Okay, send some uh, unofficial figure out there, purely informal, a reporter not too closely identified with the administration, who could nose around, blow up a few pretty trial balloons, can't hurt. A tingly moment when he finally broached it, after a big Brazil briefing session, that famous confidential smile, and then saying that he had a little adventure in mind, wanted to discuss it with me, privately. Was his tentativeness only his habitual caution, or a signal that if anything went wrong, the visit, and the visitor, were politically expendable? Still, an important opening in our foreign policy. Lots of weighty arguments for it. 
heal the fratricidal breach that rent the nation so the continent can stand united against a rising tide of starvation and revolution. Hawks who want to retake lost lands of the West, quote, by force seem to be growing stronger, need neutralizing. Ecotopian ideas are seeping over the border more dangerously, can't be ignored any longer, might be detoxified by exposure, etc. Maybe we can find a hearing for proposal to reopen diplomatic relations, perhaps trade proposals too. With reunification a gleam in the eye, even just a publicizable chat with Vera Alwyn could be useful. The president, with his customary flexibility, could use it to fend off both hawks and subversives. Besides, as I told Francine, who scoffed, naturally, even after three brandies, I want to see Ecotopia because it's there. Can things really be as weird there as they sound? I wonder. Have been mulling over the no-nos. Must stay clear of the secession itself. Too much bitterness could still be aroused. But fascinating stories there. Probably how the secessionists filched uranium fuel from power plants for the nuclear mines they claimed to have set in New York and Washington. How their political organization, led by those damned women, managed to paralyze and then supplant the regular political structure, and got control of the armories and the guard. How they bluffed their way to a standoff, helped, of course, by the severity of the national economic crisis that struck so conveniently for them. Lots of history there to be told someday, but now is not the time. Getting harder to say goodbye to the kids when I take off on a long trip. Not that it's really such a big deal since I sometimes miss a couple of weekends even when I'm around, but my being away so much seems to be beginning to bother them. Pat may be putting them up to it. I'll have to talk to her about that. Where else would Faye get the idea of asking to come along, Jesus, into the darkest ecotopia with typewriter and eight-year-old daughter? No more Francine for six weeks. It's always refreshing to get away for a while, and she'll be there when I get back, all charged up by some adventure or other. Actually sort of exciting to think of being totally out of touch with her, with the editorial office, in fact, with the whole country. No phone service, wire service indirect, uncanny isolation the ecotopians have insisted on for 20 years. And in Peking, Bantistan, Brazil, there always had to be an American interpreter who couldn't help dangling ties from home. This time, there will be nobody to share little American reactions with. And it is potentially rather dangerous. These ecotopians are certainly hotheads, and I could easily get into some serious trouble. Government's control over population seems to be primitive compared to ours. Americans are heartily hated. In a jam, the ecotopian police might be no help at all. In fact, they apparently aren't even armed. Well, ought to draft the first column. Midair, perhaps not the worst place to begin. <laughs>